Welcome. Physics of the Rattleback. What is the Rattleback? This is the Rattleback. Okay. Looks like just a piece of plastic. You uh, provide a torque, initial rotation. It stops. And then it comes back in the opposite direction. So things don't normally do this. You push something along the table. It'll eventually stop under the force of friction. But it won't come back in the opposite direction. Unless, of course, maybe you push it up an incline. So what's going on? The answer is on my t-shirt. There's the answer. Of course, that's probably not enough for you. So I am going to tell you where this equation comes from and why I think this provides a solution to what I call the rattleback magic. Okay, before I begin, I want to induce a coordinate system onto the rattleback. So I am going to have an x-axis this way, y-axis this way, and a z-axis this way, somewhat arbitrary. Uh, the little xyz will be attached to the rattleback and rotate with it. The capital xyz will remain at rest, called an inertial frame. Okay, just a few definitions before we start. So what is torque? Torque is what must be applied to something to get it to rotate. Okay, for example, say this is a merry-go-round rotating about this axis. If I apply a force in this direction, it will induce a torque and cause it to rotate in that direction. It will give it an angular velocity, say one revolution per second. And that's what this variable is. The rate at which it might be increasing or decreasing is called the angular acceleration. That's this variable. And then how the mass is distributed about the rotation axis is this variable. Just take the mass of this disk, multiply it by this radius squared, and then take a half, and that would be the moment of inertia. Okay, so the first experiment I did with the rattleback is this. Okay, it's simply um, displace it from its resting position, and it rocked initially, and then it started to rotate. Let's watch that again. Okay, yeah, so it rocked initially like a seesaw, and then it started to rotate. Okay, so the rocking probably makes sense to you, like a seesaw, but rotating is kind of spooky. So what's going on? This is the rattleback magic. Okay, so the slides after this get kind of technical, so I thought I would provide an intuitive explanation before I move on. Um, the first video is just me rotating, uh, providing a torque and allowing this ball to rotate along an axis through the top, right? So it's just rotating along, say, a vertical axis. Okay, the second video, I put a mass at the edge. It's been in. Now look at it. Okay, so this ball doesn't have symmetry about the axis of rotation. The center mass here is right dead center. Here, it's no longer dead center. So it's asymmetrical with respect to the rotation axis. So these torques along the non-vertical axis cause this thing to wobble. So it's the asymmetrical mass structure about the rotation axis which actually creates this rattleback rat magic rattleback torques. Okay, so what is the answer? I saw my t-shirt that I said the answer is in this equation. So how is that? Okay, so these three equations are torque equations. Okay, for something that's rotating about three axes. Um, and this is the one we're going to really focus on. Because this is the, the torque equation that causes this rotation along this axis. This torque equation describes the rotation along this axis. And this torque equation describes the rotation along this axis. But again, the, the weirdness comes from this counterclockwise torque on this one. So when I initially remember the previous video when I just displaced the front's resting position started to rock. So these were z greater than zero. These are angular accelerations along the x and y provided by the torque due to gravity. So having those values non-zero here, as long as these are non-zero, induces that weird torque, okay? Um, so when are these non-zero? when you have an asymmetric mass, okay? Torque simplified, so here's a, a, a simpler example. So going back to a disc rotating about a z-axis, this equation actually becomes this equation for such example because if it's not rotating about these other axes, these become zero, okay? These become zero, and we're left with this. And all this says is um, if something is accelerating along uh, the z-axis, if you multiply that by the moment of inertia around the z-axis, 
you will get the torque along the z-axis. Okay, but we have something rocking around all three axes. Again. So we are stuck with these three equations. So just kind of refresh your memory here. Let's watch this. See how it rocks along all three? It's rotating along the z, but look how it rocks also. It's rocking this way, it's rocking that way. Okay, so I decided to create a simplified Radoback model. I thought it would be difficult to try to compute the moments of inertia and the products of inertia for that thing. And so I created something that I thought was analogous. Um, and this is what I came up with. So I put a mass over here with coordinates, initial coordinates at 2 in the x, minus 2 in the x over here, y3 over here, and then up 2. This one is 2 in the x direction, minus 1 in the y direction, and up 1. Okay. The object, uh, when I imagine, this is a fictitious object, I didn't actually design it, but um, if you were to have this, these two balls on the side of this, say, a ball bearing, and you let it go, then um, this thing would fall under the force of gravity. Okay, gravity would induce a torque here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to analyze my particle model, the analogous rattleback model. And what I decided to do is analyze this equation. Now this has got a lot of terms. I didn't feel like doing a full-blown simulation of all three equations, so I tried to simplify this. And what I did was I asked the question, uh, what is the torque as the thing begins to slow? So you provide a rotation, right? You provide a rotation, it slows under the force of friction, but it continues to rock along the x and y axes. So as it slows, this becomes zero. Right, that becomes zero, and this becomes zero. So this equation evolves into this equation, okay? So then what I did is I applied some initial values to my analogous Rattleback model as the thing slowed and plugged it in here. Plugged in a variety of what I thought were reasonable values into this equation to see if I could get a positive value because a counterclockwise torque means this is positive. And what I found was terms 3 and 5 have opposite signs and their sum was minimal. Term 4 is always greater than term 4 and exceeds the sum of 3 and 5. So this turned out to be greater than 0. Okay? And the configuration was such that the acceleration along the x-axis exceeds that of the y-axis. Okay, so I set this up so that I knew when it, gravity caused a torque, it would accelerate at a greater rate along the x than the y. Okay? And that gave me, in part, um, the results I'm talking about. Okay, and here are actually some of my values. So I computed my products of inertia, my moments of inertia, and I plugged those back into <clears throat> this equation along with some assumptions regarding the rate of rotation, the angular velocities. Okay, so key requirements for back magic I've mentioned this a few times. So if the products of inertia are zero and the moments of inertia about the x and y axis are the same, which implies a perfectly symmetrical object about the axis rotation, then it would not be possible to get a torque along a, a torque along the z-axis from rotations about the x and y. Okay, so I proved that mathematically. Um, the rattleback, if you study it, is not perfectly mass symmetrical about the three, ax th three axes of rotation. It looks like it from the top, but if you turn it upside down, you'll see that it's kind of oddly shaped. Definitely not symmetrical about that point of rotation. So there it is. There's the mat rattleback magic. Okay, so back to the t-shirt. So I think, so this is the answer. I really believe this. the answer to this lies in this, the fact that when these values are non-zero, your products of inertia are non-zero, and these are not the same, then a rotation about those x and y axes induces this magical torque. Pretty remarkable stuff. So anyway, I, I, um, this is kind of a mock-up of a t-shirt I made, but I actually printed it and uh, have a copy of it. And um, if you're interested, uh, send me an email if you want one of these shirts. And if I get a bunch of emails, maybe 20 of them, then I'll put some out on Amazon and um, they, you can purchase them. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.